I will uh, start with you, uh, Madam Minister. Uh, what is, how can you explain us why uh, the uh, Emirates are so much involved in, in space activities? What difference uh, does it make in the next 50 years uh, whether you are uh, uh, involved in these uh, costly, uh, uh, expensive activities, or if you if you uh, if you were not, uh, uh, as most countries of your size, please. So good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure being here with you. Saying thank you for the invitation, and it's a pleasure to meet you for the first time um, as we lead uh, both the space sectors in each of our respective nations. The space sector for the UAE, when we first advented into it, and it's a historic, I think, development over the course of the last 24 years where we we're users of space technologies. And in 2009, we transitioned, sorry, 2006, we transitioned into developers of such technologies. Was for the core principle that we need to further diversify our economy. And if you need to sort of further diversify your economy today, it means you need to have a strong base in science and technology. And what better and more challenging sector can you expedite the development of your technological capabilities in a short amount of time? And that's why the space sector was used from the get-go. Now, as we progress forward, so we're talking about 24 years of development from the space sector, from users of space technologies, to developers of small satellite systems, to developers of planetary exploration mission. We now look at the important factor that the space sector will play in our country's future. And that's the development of a private sector in space that adds on to our economy and then creates an amazing ripple effect into other sectors that utilize technologies. Today, we sit at a turning point where we have capable engineering uh, capabilities to design and develop complex engineering systems. You require complex engineering systems, for example, to upgrade your existing industries. You require some skill sets that are available in the space sector, not only to develop your own space uh, and technology capabilities in the private sector, but you're also able to develop them across other strategic sectors that require those technological advancements. When we talk about the next 50 years for the UAE and the next 50 years for the space sector in the UAE, we're talking about the advent of the, the increase of demand for the private sector. And we come at an amazing time where the private sector is getting more and more traction and is able to push forward and it's the right time to enter into certain markets. So as we move forward, the role of the UAE's, the, the, the government of the UAE in the space sector is to develop the capabilities of the private sector and be able to transfer that knowledge and know-how and allow a lot of the capabilities that have been developed over the course of the last 20 years to start transitioning into the space sector, into the private sector. The private sector also requires a second primary component, demand. You need to start creating demand. So what we're doing with our future programs is to create business and provide contracts to the private sector to be able to flourish. So you're providing capabilities, you're ensuring that you have demand so that the other sectors are, are, are taking on the products and services that are coming in from the private sector. You are upskilling your existing private sector by ensuring that they have access to contracts that allows them to, develop, to, to, to deliver at higher and higher standards. And to bring all of that together, you need to ensure that you're continuously challenging yourself and moving forward. And the mechanism by which you challenge yourself is by bringing in exploration missions. If we talk about, so that's the play on the private sector. Then you talk about the ripple effect. If I go back a step, we said that the primary objective is to develop our science and technology capabilities. Space is quite aspirational. Living in a country that has sent a spacecraft to Mars is quite different than living in a country that hasn't done it. You've opened up an immense opportunities and we lived through this this year. We saw conversations changing in entire households in February of this year. We started this year with a skepticism of whether or not we're going to get to Mars. Come February, every single age group and every single household in this country spoke about the dangers of getting to Mars. That's a big conversation changer for you to be able to get scientific explanations and scientific objectives across and have the entire public root for it. For me, that was a monumental shift in creating 
the future generation, which will then capture on the development of the, of the future sectors. Because a window of opportunity was open, and I was speaking earlier, this window of opportunity never existed for me. I never dared to say that I will work in the space sector one day, let alone work on a, on a mission to Mars. This is not something that I thought was possible for myself or for anyone in my generation. But today, my children grow up in a, in a world which this was okay, it's normal. They lived through it. They lived through an astronaut being put into space. They lived through science being something that's normal that you can go into and study. They lived through sending, some, sending a spacecraft to Mars when you knew that maybe, maybe there's a 50% chance only of succeeding. And that gets me to my last point, which this creates a nice driver for, especially for, you, like you said, nations that are advancing into, into technology. Technology is very risky, regardless of what stream you're going on. Space is, of course, the next level of risk. You change and transform an entire mechanism of thinking by using the space sector where we've increased our appetite for risk. And I've experienced this in my daily job where I can propose things that are quite risky and probably get approvals on it because we have a better understanding on how to capitalize on risk and develop a mechanism by which you develop programs and projects and be able to get the maximum impact out of it. And that general understanding and balance between risk taking, between appetite for failure, between what it means for success is what is needed during any transition of any nation that's going from a current economy that it has that's based on natural resources to an economy that's based on knowledge and know-how and experience, an economy that has risk as an inherent DNA of what you're doing. And that, those are several factors that the UAE has gone into space and will continue to invest in space over the course of the next decade or two to ensure that we're able to have a very robust and organically developed science and technology sector within the country. Thank you very much. So your approach implicitly means that for you, one cannot become excellent in technology without the space dimension. Because after all, you could, you could say that you can specialize or invest in, 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 in various dimensions of technology, but not necessarily investing in, in space uh, activities. So my understanding of your approach is that for you to be at the forefront of the understanding of technology, its uh, implications implies uh, the space dimension. Uh, that's a statement and a question at the same time. But the other thing uh, which, is, uh, which I want to ask you immediately is where do you draw the line between uh, reality and dream. So you're, the answer. I'm speaking of Mars in particular. Yes. Yeah. So the answer on the first question is you can go about developing a science and technology sector within your country in different mechanisms. What space dimension brings in is speed by which you're able to develop capabilities. Mm. Because if you take developing a spacecraft, such as a mission to Mars, you get scientists that put to your requirements. So you start creating opportunities for scientists to work in such, in such areas. And then you also marry that with almost every field of engineering from computer scientists and engineers, like the two of us here, uh, to um, mechanical engineers, to people that are special in thermal systems and so on. You're able to electronics and so on. So you're able to touch on multiple disciplines of engineering and use a new mechanism to do it. So it's the space dimension adds speed of development into it, which I think nations need to take into consideration, especially if they don't have a lot of time to transition and transform. That's where that decision comes. Now, where do you draw the line between science fiction, I'm assuming, and a, and a dream, and, um, and going to Mars, for instance? The approach that we took, I think, maybe when it was announced in 2014, seemed unreal. I think up to this year, for a lot of people that I had conversations off the record with, it was unreal. It was not something that, it was something that they classified as, as science fiction for us. But the approach that we took in development of this mission and the direction that was given was a very well calculated one to not make it science fiction and actually make it realistic. And that's how you manage the design and development of this mission. Um, the budget consideration, the time consideration, all these different factors that you surround the mission with. And then we went down the dimension of working with a knowledge transfer partner to develop this. And we worked together as, as one team. 
So it's the methodology that you take in designing and developing those missions that move it for the from the realm of science fiction to the realm of possibilities. And this is the mechanism that we've taken for several times. And I myself am taking a lot of this into uh, my portfolio within advanced technology. Because the question for us in the Ministry of Industry and Advanced Technology is how do you elevate your existing sectors by infusing technology? So a lot of those learnings you can actually take there. And how do you create new sectors that are based on technology within your economy? Um, the space program for us is touched on a lot of mechanisms to be able to do that. So I hope another time we will bring uh, Ria, if we come back uh, Ria for WPC, uh, maybe you have an idea of a panel with the Minister of uh, Advanced Technologies and the Minister of Tourism to develop admin tourism in Mars, on Mars. Wouldn't you classify that as science fiction? Just a question to you. We will see. <laughs> we will see. <laughs>